Oh boy, I always wanted to talk about this. The Resident Evil live action movies. These I uh, scale from eh to shit, 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 shitty, shitter, shitty ten. Yes, they're bad. They're bad not only in what the story they're representing, but just critically bad at times. They, I know the first one made a box, uh, box office, not a hit, but it did good. But it's like, it, it was not the best representation of what a video game movie was. But it's like, there's not that many, so it's like, it's hard to tell. Alright, from, this is coming from a dude that was a big fan of Resident Evil, from Resident Evil 0 to Resident Evil 6, and, well, technically Revelations 2, and eventually it's going to be Resident Evil 7. But beyond that, let's focus on what these movies are. Now, Mila Jovich, and I, I don't hate her, she's a pretty good actor, and she's fucking hot too, so that's a plus in my book, but the thing is, it's like, I feel like this... This was trying to be a, a spin-off. I really feel like if this was its own story, it would be been alright. It would have been more tolerable. Same situation like with the Super Mario Brothers movie. I like how ABGN pointed out the fact that if this movie wasn't wasn't called Super Mario Brothers, it probably wouldn't have pissed me off that much. Hell, I might have actually enjoyed it. But if it wasn't called that, it probably wouldn't have seen the light of day. So that's the shit I gotta realize. First movie. Talks about the hive. Uh, wasn't really location dived into the games, uh, unless you count uh, Resident Evil Outbreak. I honestly feel like this series took inspiration more from the those games, but the games came after the movies, so it's a little weird thing. And it's weird because like Outbreak One actually takes a place in the same coherence as like the movies do, at least the first two movies. Now the first movie, like I said, it takes place in the hype. And it has this team of people that you do not even know. The only things that they use are just enemies that you're aware of. Zombies, liquors, uh, the Red and White Queen. But they give the Red Queen a little bit more in depth um, about what the hell she is there for. She is there to... She's there to defend the information of Umbrella. And she's very sadistic. And it's like... At this point, it doesn't feel like Resident Evil. It feels more like fear, honestly, which is cool, but it's like, this isn't the movie that you guys are trying to be. The first one actually tried to focus a little bit more on tension and horror. And that's why I gotta give props to it. It had some action scenes, but it's like, it still kept its ground in what the hell was pretty terrifying situations. And then once you see the ending of it, it's like, damn. Wow, it, we're in Raccoon City. This is fucking awesome. But it's, again, it's like wow. I don't know any fucking characters. It's like none of these characters are in the freaking game. Well, except like, except for the enemies, as I mentioned before. The second movie came along and said, okay, you know what? Look, we, these guys are complaining that we don't have enough people that we know from the games. So let's put them in here. And that's why I feel like they just dumped all this shit in there. We got Nemesis, Jill Valentine, uh, Carlos, uh, yeah. Um, you know, we got, um, we got, uh, we got Umbrella, and, yeah, there's that, but the, this one takes place more of Raccoon City, and you'll see a little bit more connection with Resident Evil 3 specifically, they don't really dive into any other viruses besides the T-Virus, and that's it. They don't talk about the G-Virus. They don't talk about Code Veronica. They don't talk about any of those other ones. Which is weird, because it's like in an apocalypse of Raccoon City was, there's two viruses floating around. It was the G and the T one. But that's that's where the fan, fan inner fanboy is talking. But I'd be fine if it was just the T-Virus. And I like the fact that they implement shit like the antivirus, too. I, that's another cool thing that I do like. It's similar to like a snake bite it's like okay this thing is still a threat if you do not get the right medication for it but it helps give like the main characters or really dynamic characters that are going to be a part of the series later on an excuse it's like okay you made logical sense now i can see why the hell they're going to make it in the next one it's not a big deal but it's still a threat of time you still get that caution like okay if they don't get their fucking antivirus soon they're going to turn into a fucking zombie that's it. Oh, yeah, and they also use the zombie dogs. Forgot about that. 
Now, this one was the one where I actually was like, you know what? I, I, this is kind of guilty pleasure. I like it. It's all right. It's not pissing me off. I mean, it, it had some shit that I like, but it's like at the same time, it's like it's not really a Resident Evil movie, but whatever. I'm not going to complain about it too much. It wasn't until Extinction where it just decided to throw everything out the window. It decided to make the Resident Evil series a post-apocalyptic future. Here's the thing. With Resident Evil, society is still intact. It's just that we have it's just that in there you have to worry about freaking uh bio uh bioterrorism and all that shit. Uh distributing uh, uh bio weapons. That's really where the gist comes in. It's not the fact that it's really contagious anymore, it's the fact that it's just creating all these fucking mutants and all these powerful fucking cre not creatures that are basically just killing and shit. But they still have consciousness and awareness. And right there, it's like, okay, I get it. You have to make it more realistic. You gotta go, like, okay, I need to make it more there. But at the same time, it's like you're kind of d d kind of just sleeping away from what the games are. And it's like, okay, fine, I can tolerate. But again, this is the thing. They add characters in there, but they don't really explain how the hell they really... They don't smoothly come in. They just said, hey, you remember that person from from that game? Oh, yeah. We got him in here. We got her or him. Uh, Carlos is back again. Um, what they have also is Claire, and she kind of just pops up out of nowhere. They don't really ex explain how the hell she got there. Or she was from the first from the first movie or the second movie. No, nope, she's just there, and it's kind of dumb. And it's like, wow, okay, this is stupid. And then we get this is going back into the second one. This is where a lot of the stupid shit popped up at the end of the movie. Alice gets telekinetic powers. That basically make pe people's eyes bleed. Later on, she also gets pyrotechnic powers, which is stupid. Now, when I say stupid, I use it very loosely because there were some powers like that in Code Veronica. One, one chick, uh, which is basically Veronica, uh, <coughs> now, Alexia, had that kind of power. But what what's dumb about this is the fact that you let the good guy get all the fucking powers. What? made the enemies so fucking terrifying is because they had all these fucking weird ass mutations and the fact that they can go and just are basically on the level of god that's why wesker was kind of trying to get that level of power and just obliterate everyone now with mila with uh, now with alice the thing was what kind of sets me off about that is like uh, it's it's not imposing it's not really uh, it's not I don't feel like this person is in any real danger half the time so it's like whatever that's that's what makes Resident Evil tense is because you feel like your character is in fucking danger you feel like you're in danger you're not a super powered being the only time you really technically feel like that is in mercenaries and that's a stretch honestly but anyways that's again post apocalyptic world and then they're trying to make these viruses be more self conscious more self-aware and more intelligent but like I said it's so weird because like, everything's all post apocalyptic and you guys are trying to de still develop bioweapons it's like you, you guys main problem should be focusing on survival why the hell are you guys enhancing this shit even harder and it's like such a weird thing that's why I don't really like it per se because it's taken this like kind of dumbass route And not only that, it's like it gets dumb at the end too. That you have, then we go into cloning where all the clones are. And you're saying, well, Resident Evil 6 did it too. Yeah, it did. And not many people like that game. I, I thought it was okay. I liked the game. But here's the thing you didn't have a million other clones for your main protagonist. That's the point. And it's like, okay, this gets kind of dumb after a while. The next movie, Afterlife, oh my god, it's. it's it's so bad, honestly, because it's like, again, I feel like this guy just, the director just went like, hey, you know what, Here, let's just take some cool scenes or just take some characters that people know and just dump them in there with this story that's not really that well grounded or doesn't really have that much to do with the original Resident Evil games, but whatever. It, it's still in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, basically, you get uh, some guys from Resident Evil 5, like that sledgehammer dude. Um, you also get... Uh, more of the Los Plagas uh, freaking mouth uh, mutations or whatever. 
from the zombies and then you also get you like i said you get a bunch of stupid shit just piled in just for shits and giggles you also get wesker in there and this is the big thing where the resident evil live action movies do at least impress me is like they do get they do actually get good um costume design some of them the characters that are supposed to look like in the game they do look like them and it's like i, I gotta give them props for that wesker did look kind of cool uh chris looked all right uh jill valentine looked all right from when she wore the tight uh skin suit legging and i gotta admit that was pretty hot to him to her wearing the normal police outfit which it looks like a dollar store hooker which she wore but i'll ignore that and i'm talking about the game too risk of three she does dress up like a two dollar whore but it's like she's a police woman and she's still a fucking badass but anyways anyways Again, now the next movie that goes into it, Extinction, oh boy, we just go over the fucking top. Oh, over the fucking top. I, I know I'm hard, and I, like, I'm hard. I'm fucking hard. <laughs> I know it's hard for me to go and talk right now, but Jesus Christ, it's like, get uh, gets fucking annoying. And then Extinction, like I said, Ada pops in for no fucking reason. They don't even really explain why the fuck she's there. They at least put in the fact, again, like the game, and another thing too, she does look good. She's also she also looks fucking good, like fucking good. She's hot as fuck. Uh, I don't know who the fuck the director is, but goddamn it, bro, you know how to pick your chicks, dude. They, they're fucking hot. But anyways, she looks like Ada, so that that's cool too. But they also got the fact that yeah, Ada works for Wesker, but they don't really implement like this is the thing. It's like you can't just cram some of these guys in here without really developing them. The point was what what made the franchise more what made the characters of the franchise more like eye-catching and more like oh my god i feel for this guy is because you've been through them through a lot of the other series and even then you at least have a setup for who the fuck they are may not be the most complex but there's a setup ada literally just pops in as like alice is just looking at a monitor of wesker and and what they do is like the ki the people that died from the first one uh, Alice's team from the first movie come back and they're supposed to be like they were just clones and all that shit and then they get into all this weird uh, uh, simulation uh, buildings and all that crap where these sections are just like yeah this is just where we simulate all the freaking zombie viruses and all that shit and how they would contaminate a, a city or whatever and it's like, I like that idea. I like that idea. But I would have loved that more idea if it was a different movie. If it was just like this random person ends up getting abducted. And this was the idea I actually had for a movie too. Is someone gets abducted. They end up getting sent to this freaking distant place. This guy has no idea where the fuck he is. Guy or girl, it doesn't really matter. And he's he or she is basically fighting their way through this shit. And it's like, they're in this whole simulation fucking... Uh, center the simulation dome where all these buildings are the city it's literally a model of a normal city or a normal downtown area and what's cool is you would be able to go like holy shit wow like holy crap it's got everything from the brink and wire who are you guys or who the hell you're funded and that would be the mystery of like them trying to get to the 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 center of all this shit but the thing what this movie does it's like again you're cramming resident evil in there when it Really, this honestly, these movies would be fine if they weren't Resident Evil. If you just kick that shit out, modify them, just like tweak it a little bit, spend more time. And this is another thing about this movies too. And I'm gonna go into this point after I get into the last movie. I haven't seen it. That's what this is for because the movie is about to come out, or I think it just came out. I'm not that sure. I'm gonna have to look it up again. But the point B is the fact that it's like this one. At the end of Extinction, she gets out of the simulation. Oh, yeah, and this was another stupid thing. Wesker uh, takes out her T-Vice, which is making her all this mutant powers. And just to put it back into her, once she was done with all that shit. And Wesker ends up joining her, and then they end up trying... They're basically at the White House being barricaded from all the freaking zombies and all that shit. Because it's just pure chaos. And it's like, when I, when I saw the trailer, and when they're playing Guns N' Roses, a uh, sweet child of mine... Or, not Sweet Child, mine, oh, I think it was Welcome to the Jungle. Oh, Paradise City, Paradise City, that's what it was. 
And I'm like, it's so over the top that it's like, I, I have to watch it. I just have to because it's so fucking o out there. It's so out there. And I'm like, oh my god. Fuck it. I'll see it. I'll see it. And then I'm going like, uh, maybe this was a bad idea. But the big point, too, that I want to get across as well is the fact that is like again like now this is the graphics and graphics I mean the special effects I'm thinking about the video game and I'm thinking about the movie is that the special effects in this movies can deem from pretty good to wow this fucking sucks especially in like afterlife that's where I thought like man this is shitty these are some shitty special effects Extinction was pretty fucking bad as well. That was kind of terrible, too. And it's like, the humor that they put in, it's like, it makes me laugh sometimes, but it's like, it's it's off. It's like, it, it doesn't really belong here. I, like I said, if they would have just made this into a different movie, I probably wouldn't have that much of a gripe with it. And if I can remember correctly, yeah, I, I can't remember who said this. I think it was um, Jeremy that... Jeremy Jans or Jeremy J Jones or some shit like that. He, he's one of the movie reviewer dudes. And what he explained was like, it just feels like a sequel to Ultraviolet. Or maybe that was Angry Joe. I'm not that sure. He, he, look both of them up. They both uh, reviewed uh, one of the Resident... I think they reviewed all the Resident Evil movies. But... And what sucks is too, because they do exist so like two good like Resident Evil movies. And when I say good, I say like it's, it's good and in the sense that it's very coherent with the story, it's pretty damn good, and it's freaking awesome sometimes. Actually awesome most of the times. It, it's it's two pretty good movies. I honestly say the other one is better than the other, but these are two movies, Degeneration and Damnation. These are the animated Resident Evil movies, but they were specifically made by Capcom, so they know the story of it, and what's cool is they actually tie, uh, excuse me, tie into the story. That's what I thought was pretty interesting. Resident Evil Degeneration takes place in between Resident Evil 4 and Resident Evil 5. And they even mention stuff like the BSKA or BSAA. Yeah, yeah, that's what it's called. All that shit about the pharmaceutical, no, no, all the bioterrorism and all that shit. And they go in more depth with how the fuck that affects everyone's everyday life. And they even have this guy in there that gets mutated that had a family that the reason why he's motivated is because his family died in Raccoon City. Umbrella just fucking wiped that under the table. Everyone, the government, wiped that shit under the table. And then he's going for revenge at this pharmaceutical comp, this other pharmaceutical company. And it's cool. And it's like all and and it's like 3D animation. It's pretty fucking good. I say the first one is really good. Give it a watch. The second one, on the other hand, is like I, I have the movie. I still haven't watched it yet. J.K. Lowell. Um, that one's pretty good too, except I don't like how some of the scenes are in like broad daylight and shit like that. It kind of ruins the whole atmosphere. It, that one is supposed to take place in between 5 and 6, if I can remember correctly. Or I think it's supposed to take place after 6, because 8 is in there, and she's wearing the shit that she did in uh, 6. So, it's really cool. I really recommend watching those movies. If you're a Resident Evil fan, watch those movies. Don't watch the live action ones. It's sad that those ones make more than that one. But it's like, what are you going to do? <sighs> that That's just been my little gripe. I know it's like, it's a really draggy talk. It wasn't really a freaking cut, fast-paced shit. But it's not necessarily an analytical video. It's more of just like a talk, honestly. It's like, what are you going to do? But thank you all for listening. And I, I want to know what your guys' opinions on the live-action movies. Like, do you hate them? Do you like them? Or are you kind of mixed in between? Do you guys love the anima animated ones? Do you guys hate the animated ones? Do you guys feel like Resident Evil should not have been made into a movie? Do you feel like any video games in general can be made into a movie without fucking it up? That, that's a big question right there. And I don't think anyone has a straight answer for that one. I think a good majority of people will say no. But they secretly hope. They hope that, goddamn, can it at least be good? I mean, shit, guys. I mean, we haven't had really a, an amazing cartoon made into a live-action movie. I know that sucks, but I mean... Well, I guess you could already... Char no, Charlie Brown was animated, so... 
I don't know. It's like making something like live action. I mean, if you again, what turns out better is uh, when you make a cartoon into an animated movie. That's what usually turns out better because it's the same medium. But whatever. It's cool. It's all good in the hood. Those are just my thoughts on the movies of Resident Evil, the live action franchise. But that's basically it. Um, see you guys later. Um, remember to check my Facebook, my Twitter, and all that shit, or whatever you want to call that. Um, I'm not on anything else besides YouTube, so it's like, that's really it, but yeah, bye.